Find better odds on WA Racing with Betfair. Punters can access all WA Racing codes with a 6% market base rates. Think you have an edge over others? Then jump onto betfair.com.au. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue, call 1800 858 858. Welcome back to Sports Day. We're here for Red Energy, awarded CanStar's most trusted energy retail nationally for 2021. That's Red Energy and across Tasmania for Wilson Homes. They believe in great design, so you love being home. It's been a pretty big couple of weeks for the Carlton Footy Club in the news, Jared. They had the review that was pushed forward, and uh, it wasn't supposed to be pushed forward. Is this the, the independent review that's no longer independent, or is it still well, independent? Well, your words, the independent. Is it independent if the chairman incoming is chairing the independent review? Well, I, I would ask you to answer your own question. Jared. I don't think it is. I see. Yeah. Right. Well, and yeah, either, did you, either did Richo and yes, no, Richo. <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, but on a serious note, um, the day after that review was confirmed, yes. Jared, one of their long-term assistants mm-hmm. and a man that also coached the club yep. um, in the absence of Mick Moldhouse when he was sacked, John Barker resigned. And this is the same John Barker we had enormous dialogue with earlier in the season. Yeah, I think he was on a four-hour drive home from a pre-season match. And <laughs> he ended was. up just sort of doing most of the show with him. Uh, John joins us for the first time since that moment. John, welcome. Uh, thanks for having me, gents, again. Uh, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Now, Sam, I resigned before the review was announced, just so just so we're all clear there. I see. Um, no, but, and, and you're generally very good with your facts. But, um, no, look, I, I resigned on a Monday uh, morning. Um, went and spoke to Brad Lloyd and uh, David Teague and um, just worked through that process really, really thoroughly and wanted to give the club a, a heads up and just let them know that at the end of the season, I was uh, I was keen to move out of the AFL world for a whole host of different reasons. Um, so why did they make you go there, there and there, then, buddy. John? Why, why wouldn't they have let you coach out the year? I mean, it just seems a weird decision from a footy club at a time mm. when assistant coaches are doing more work than ever. We've lost all these people from footy clubs. You're one of the most experienced there. And it, they end up making a decision that sees Luke, pa- uh, Luke Parker, Power. Uh, Luke Power step in for half a season. Well, it's a good question, and I, I and the, I think there's a, some really good reasons behind it. And um, we had a, a really good conversation about it. Um, spoke to Brad Lloyd about um, the positives and negatives about going on, and and both um, in relation to that, also what was good and 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 what was not so good about about leaving immediately. And just with the, with that impending review coming. Um, um, with the club then obviously having to go through that and and um, Tiggy and the coaching panel and the footy department in general having that review, we just felt like it was um, going to be enough clean air for the club to, to be able to make um, some decisions un, unimpeded without me being there, knowing that at the end of the year I was going to leave. So um, it all added up to um, being a reasonably good decision. Oh, look, I'm I'm happy with it, mate. I, I now get to start to have a bit of a breather and then start to look at what's next for me. Um, and the club gets a bit of clean air um, without me being around. Obviously, I've been there for quite some time and they get to work work out um, what's going well and, and, and what can possibly improve going forward uh, on the back of this review. Last time we spoke to you, John, we had a great chat. Uh, it was pre-season. There was a lot of uh, excitement ahead. Um we spoke about you and your career choices. Uh, you've got, obviously, uh, great talents in the wider uh, business world, which uh, clearly will open up for you if you don't come back to football. But you decided to stay in football. We spoke about the pressure of the soft cap. And uh, ultimately, we're looking forward to Carlton making a move on the finals. Now, round 13, it's been a hell of a disappointing year. If, if Luke Sayers came to you, and he may well have already done so, and said, give us two or three things that we're not doing as well as we should be, which is giving some sort of explanation as to why it's been such a disappointing view. Are you prepared to share that with us? What I'd say to Luke, uh, Jared, is um, I'm now unemployed and I'm looking for another gig and uh, that's actually not my concern. But yeah. I, um, I, I look, I, I think I think some of the issues that have occurred have been pretty well documented. And, um, um, we, like I, and, for me to rehash it now is probably not, not not the most appropriate thing, but I think the club's not too far off. In, in all in all honesty, and I think 
they've got a playing list that's that's not too far off being ready to go. And um, I made an analogy uh, about the way Melbourne's been in the last couple of years, and they've they've splattered and splurted and, and a bit like us this year. Like we, we actually played some really good footy mm-hmm. uh, at times, and 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 let ourselves down at times. And uh, and at the end of the day, the ability to bring that consistency. Um, is what's going to allow the team to be a, a, a bloody good team and, and take that next step. Now, um, you, you've, you've addressed it in a number of ways, um, Jared and, and Sam, on your, on, your, on your varying shows about some of the little variables that, that uh, are costing us at different times of the game, but they're all pretty well documented, and I, and I think that um, um, they're, they're all very fixable. I agree with you. You may have heard my commentary. I've been one of the more vocal commentators suggesting that uh, I think you're not far away. I think that there's great potential for this group. And yet uh, I go to Carlton Games. I look at Carlton Games. I watch the behind the vision scene of Carlton Games. I think there's a real issue with your system in defence, but I'm not the only one there. And there are better authorities than me at saying that. And I think that's very fixable. But the question is, who's going to fix it? Well, I think, look, I'm hopeful that the the current coaching group and TU will be able to find the solutions to that. And there's, there's times when they defend really well from a system point of view, but yep. there's times when they don't. And, and it's the it's the breakdowns. Because people can't concentrate for, for full two-hour stretches in games, um, um, you, you're going to have those breakdowns. And the ability to, to organise and have players there to organise just needs to keep growing. And, and that comes with maturity. You know, you, you look at the generals of, of back lines and... There's probably none none as good as Hodgie when he was absolutely at his peak of his powers, but um, that happened for him a little bit later in his career, and so we we just that that's growing in in the Carlton group, and and when we get enough players that are consistent enough of being able to not only get their job done but help organise that system as the game un, games unfolding, I'm sure you'll find that um, the improvement comes very quickly. Well, I hope you're right, but just to keep challenging you, and devil's advocate, you've got the fourth most experienced list in the competition right now. This is a, this is a group from an age perspective, and I know averages can uh, sometimes paint a uh, an improper picture, but you, you have got enough experienced guys in there now to be playing finals footy, and certainly your demographic says you should be playing finals footy. That maturity is there uh- now. Yeah, well, I'm obviously talking about from a from a backline point of view. So, um, I think um, some of those older players like Murph and and Eddie are, are perhaps playing yeah. more in midfield and, and forward roles. But but you're right, there there, there is a they are, they are just about at a level where they should be um, they should be pushing up the ladder more. And and uh, one of the reasons why obviously there's a there is a review in place as we speak. John, do you think David Teague's a better coach than Brendan Bolton was? <laughs> um, Sam, gee, you've gone straight for the joke. That, mate, I, look, I think um, Teague is a good coach, mate. And, I, and, I, and I've said this and I've been on record as saying it. So, And I think that the coaching group is a really hard-working group. Um, um, but obviously, as we've just spoken about, we, we, we haven't performed to a level that, uh, of expectation. And, and therefore, as... as um, as we've we've heard through the week and through last week, that a review is going to be putting put in place, and um, I'm sure that only good solutions will come off the back of that. I guess the reason for the direct question, John, is that you know you've now seen at this club so many changes. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you saw Mick Mouldhouse sacked, and you coached the team for more than half a season. Brendan Bolton was sacked when you were there, and David Teague's under pressure as well. So you know, if it's not coaching this this group that's been there for the last five ten years, you would think would have to take a fair bit of responsibility for why they're not being able to be consistent throughout matches. Um, what which group is that, mate? The, there's in the playing group, the the, the 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 players, the guys that have have been there for a number of years. Yeah, well, geez, the playing list has, has turned over significantly. Yep. Um, in that ten years, in, in fact. There was a period of three or four years there where it was there was more turnovers than any other team in the comp. So, um, I do think that the current list that that, that sits um, where it is 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 very capable over the next two or three years. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Can I ask you about the captain, uh, Paddy Cripps? I made a suggestion to Scoop last week, and it oh, uh, yes. it knocked him off the chair. 
We all know where he's come from. We all know his status in the game. But his last uh, 18 months have, uh, for whatever reason, and we don't know the internals of injuries, etc. whatever reason, he's backed off, struggles to get back into defence, which is part and parcel of one of your problems. My question to you is simply this. Can he be a ruckman forward or a forward ruckman? Because if he can be, you add to your mobility because you you stick a more mobile Paddy Cripps in, and Paddy Cripps is a much more mobile than Ruckman. Having said that, I think De Koning is going to be a, a generational talent. But could he be? Could he be a replacement for Casbolt as a as a forward who can go in and pinch hit in the ruck? Look, oh, Jared, oh, the, you, you're obviously a very um, smart football person, and and to be honest with you, there's a lot about what you said just in that makes sense. The only the only problem is. He's still an unbelievable contest player um, and still one of the best in the game. And, and, and there's obviously been a number of conversations around him playing not quite at 100%. And mm. I've got to tell you, mate, he's one of the most courageous players I've mm. seen up close and personal. And so can I interpret that <laughs> as saying when he gets 100% and rid of injuries, we'll see the old contested beast, midfield contested beast, back to his best? I think so, mate. Okay. And, and uh, like, uh, there's not too many around the contest that, that can um, impact a contest like he can. And I think once once um, once he gets his confidence back up, there's no doubt he can go forward too and, and, and catch it and, mm. and have some some massive impact forward. Um, and I will say this: some of his defensive action over the last last five or six weeks has actually been pretty good. Mm-hmm. Every player is going to have some breakdowns, but I will say this: he is he is working as hard as anyone at, at trying to defend. Um, and, and a lot of good commentators will talk about that. It's it's okay what you're doing when you got your um, when your team's got their hands on the ball, but um, teams that end up being successful, their their effort and intent when the opposition's got the ball is just as strong. And um, um, if 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 you saw some behind goals vision of him over the last month and a half, you, you'll know that a guy who, um, as we all know, hasn't got the same running capacity as some, mm-hmm. uh, his intent has been, has been significant. So I won't let this drop because I think you're onto something here and that is how hard he works and whether or not you can keep him fresh by maintaining him as a midfielder for a period of time, pushing him forward for a period of time, putting him in the ruck for a period of time, because he actually doesn't even have to be a ruckman when he's in the ruck, nominated. All he has to do is compete and then contest at grand level, which to me gives you an advantage. But to be honest, John, this is not your problem anymore. We understand that. What are you going to do? Are you going into the business world? Are you, are you going to... Uh, he's got a commerce degree, I think, from, well, he's uh, better from than Melbourne that. University. I mean, he's, he's going to become a consultant and uh, probably end up going out to footy clubs and telling them how to run the well, does, business. Doesn't the incoming president have his own consultancy now? He's moved on from PwC. Wouldn't that be the natural... Progression. I'm not sure whether the two yeah. uh, men are right on talking terms, but uh, w- what <laughs> next for you, John? Oh, look, I, what I'm going to do, mate, is, is take a little bit of time with the family. Um, they're probably one of the main reasons yeah. why I've decided to, to step away from footy and, and, and try and get a bit better balance around what that looks like to be able to give them more energy. But uh, I'm not going to lock into anything right now. What I want to do is just get a little bit of clean air myself and, and work through what, what's going to allow me to, um, you know, a role that I'll enjoy that will also allow me to have, have some really good balance um, in, in my life. Mm-hmm. So uh, that'll happen over the next couple of months and, and I'm, I'm actually really excited about about okay. what, it, what it is or what it might be. So, um, you know, footy's given me a lot over the years, a, a bloody hell of a lot, and I've enjoyed it, been really passionate about it. Um, but... On the same token, I'm just super excited about spending that that little bit more time with the family, a little bit less um, pressure, and uh, um, you know, doing something else that, that I'm hopefully going to enjoy significantly. Well, mate, you deserve a rest. You've been a great servant of the game, a great uh, player, and a great uh, coach, assistant, senior role. Not many guys sat in the chair like you did uh, for a period of time. No. So, uh, well done. And- and thanks for uh, your company on the radio station a number of times. Uh, thank you very much, boys. Absolute pleasure. And, John, well, just as we had you on uh, 
last time, just remind you about the uh, the two elimination finals where you won the game off your own boot and kicked four in both 2000 and 2001. <laughs> I, I, th- I, think those, on a high. I think those two games go drastically the un- question about un- under Bolton the radar. And, uh, the current coach. Well, that's a fair question. No, it was a rubbish question. Oh, to a bloke on his, on his <laughs> last interview for a period of time, I thought it was rubbish. But uh, good on you, John, and uh, well done on those uh, elimination finals. <laughs> Thank you very much, boys. Uh, fond memories. Um, and appreciate the appreciate the little pump up at the end. John Barker, there. I thought. I thought that 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 was that was rubbish. That question. Th- Take, now, what, what, take that back. No, it was. It was take, rubbish. How was he ever going to answer that? That is not. I actually take personal well, offence. Well, to don't that. do. Don't be so precious. Well, don't don't be, don't be ridiculous. It's not a rubbish question. It's an absolutely fair question. As a bloke who worked alongside so both he, of them was closely, he, was he ever going to answer that question? It doesn't. No, you never. You never go into a question wondering if they're going to answer it. Yeah. Don't look for Zoe. Zoe's He's, already started to wet it. For God's sake. She thought it was rubbish too. <laughs> if you're a Tyler. Head to Beaumont's 110 stores. The best range of art excludes grouts and waterproof. And they even ask good questions at Beaumont's as well. And you win 25 grand's worth if you jump on to iCanWin.com.au. Jared and I are going to have this out in the ad break after this.